Hey everybody, as announced, it's about the Raspberry Pico today. We will create this little thing here, which is a knob with a wheel and two further buttons. And we will use this to emulate a keyboard to steer some PC program. Yeah, what's the plan for today? As said, um, I want to make a little media control center. So just an interface, a human interface device. We also need a driver from Adafruit to emulate a HID um, to control some PC or Mac specific stuff. We can start programs, we can adjust the volume with the knob. Um, the knob is, by the way, also a button. So we have three buttons here and a wheel which we can rotate um, with a Raspberry Pico and uh, some drivers from Adafruit. But now let's take a look how to build it, especially the software part, um, with our um, Raspberry Pico. Okay, let's start. So we need two buttons. It should be non-latching buttons, so sensing uh, buttons. Um, you can buy the ones I use, which are really cheap. And we need uh, our KY040, which is our wheel knob, uh, which is a button and a wheel. So rotary encoder called. Uh, and with these two, we will start. Okay, let's do the wiring. For the wiring, we need uh, to decide if we do pull up or pull down resistors for the switches. Let's go for pull up. What does it mean? We will connect our switches to ground and um, the other side of the switch, we can connect directly to our Raspberry Pico. And when we connect this to our Raspberry Pico, we need to define a pull-up resistor. Why? Because we need uh, to have a dedicated um, voltage in case that the button is not pressed. So if the button is pressed, it's easy, then it's ground, it's zero. Zero volt, so easy to detect. If the button is not pressed, you see a high impedance if there is no resistor, which is connected to your supply voltage. So we need a resistor which is connected to the supply voltage. And then if the button is not pressed, we see 3.3 volts at the input. So a little bit electronic basics, uh, high impedance, but still, uh, defined voltage for detection. And we can use the onboard resistors of the Pico. We don't need to apply external resistors. That is the good news. I will show you later um, how to use uh, the onboard resistor. Uh, now let's do the real wiring, let's say. So you should do this in real um, or you do a test setup. Uh, we have to set the switches to ground and also our encoder needs to set to ground. Our encoder also needs a supply voltage. So we will put the 3.3 volt supply on the uh, plus input of our encoder and then we have uh, three other um, outputs uh, on our rotary encoder and one is called SW for switch so we have three switches we have uh, our external switch which we put to GP0 the second one which we put to GP1 and these SW uh, output of our rotary encoder is also a switch and we can put it to GP Two. And two outputs are missing, DT and CLK. You can connect them to uh, GP3 and GP4. And later on in our source code, we will use them to detect the direction of the wheel. So left or right side, um, it, there's a little phase shift and you need to detect which output is changing first if a rotation takes place. But we will take a look at this later on. And now let's start with um, programming. Wait, before we can start with programming, you need to prepare your Raspberry Pico. And we need CircuitPython for that. CircuitPython can be found, I will set a link here in the description. And you need to, to download the UL2 file, which you can, the latest version, which you can find in my link. Please download this file now. And then we need a library from Adafruit. We need the uh, HID library for the um, human interface device library for CircuitPython. Please download this as well. 
Afterwards, you need to connect your Pico. Again, with pressing the button and connecting it, you will find it immediately on your Explorer. And now copy the UL2 file on the Pico. Just copy, paste, and afterwards, uh, when the copying is finished, the Raspberry will uh, reboot automatically and appear as the circuit Python Raspberry, like here uh, on my PC. And when this is done, please copy the library in the library directory. On my version, it was already existing, maybe because it wasn't deleted. So copy the Adafruit HID library, only this directory on your Pico in the library directory. Okay, let's start to program. First of all, as always, we start to import some library functions, some default libraries and some uh, circuit Python libraries and our Adafruit uh, HID library. So digital in is uh, one of the circuit Python board, the Adafruit USB HID library and the default library time. And afterwards, let's define our first button using the digital in library. So we define button GP0 first and we set it to digital um, IO. Oh, by the way, you need to change your interpreter to um, CircuitPython. If you don't do this, you might get an error message. My was set already to CircuitPython because our Raspberry Pico is formatted to CircuitPython. So it must be set uh, to CircuitPython. Okay, back to our switch. So we define uh, our first switch as a digital I.O. and then the method digital in out. So uh, that's just so that it's an input output. Uh, the direction is not given yet. We need first to define uh, which um, GP header we use and we use zero. So it's now bot.gp0. So now we have button GP0 set. We can use it and we can define the different methods and the direction is the first one we need to set. What direction do we want to set? We want to set it as an input, right? Because um, we want to detect on our GP0 if the button is pressed. And uh, remember, we discussed about pull up, pull down. So that's the third thing we need to define. We have to say, is it a pull up or pull down? Again, another method, uh, pull, and we say it's a pull up. Okay, let's uh, create an endless loop, a while loop. Um, we will print the value of our button. So the button is always pulled in an endless loop and we can see the value on the screen. Um, by just simply printing it directly, which is a nice debugging method. You need to save it as code uh, PI, uh, PY sorry, on your Raspberry. And uh, you re maybe you recognized it already that I wrote val and not value, so we correct this. And now you see all the truths on the screen. Um, we need to create a delay on it, a time.sleep, because otherwise the screen is not quick enough to ch uh, show changes. So we will add a sleep. Uh, of 0.2 seconds that the screen is not that quick and we start our program terminate it and restart it and now we can see that the uh, button is set to true and if we press the button it is set to false why is it true and now remember the pull up because it's usually 3.3 volts and when we press the button it is um, ground voltage so zero Okay, so I did this now for all three buttons, so always it's always the same. And I did add some further uh, routines from some libraries, keyboard, mouse, key code, and so on. You can see them in my source code on uh, GitHub. I use this now to emulate um, a keyboard. That's the Adafruit HID library, which I mentioned. Let's take a look in our uh, source code and change something to test our libraries. So we create a if a loop or if case. So um, we say if the button is pressed, so value is uh, zero or one. Remember, we have a pull up by default. So pressing means we set it to zero. So if the button is pressed, means if it's getting to zero. So uh, false in this case, false means ground. Um, we will define two uh, variables already now. We will use the consumer control, which we defined above from the libraries uh, or imported, and we will set it as a, a USB HID device. Um, and um, um, we will also define a keyboard variable and set it to the keyboard uh, also from our libraries, USB HID device. So now now we have a keyboard here and this consumer 
control which we will use. We will use cc, this our variable uh, dot send as a method to send something which we call the consumer control code and there are several like stop this will mean we stop uh, for example a video you can also use uh, play pause you can use for example mute yeah to uh, mute your volume there's a list of available commands let's let's take a mute and send it Ah, here, remember MicroPython, we need to intend the characters because it's a if loop and it needs to be defined by that. So there's no end or begin or something. Uh, now it's working. And when I press the button, take a look at my screen, you see that it's mute or unmuted. Um, so it works. And you can use all consumer control calls existing. For example, let's take volume increment. Um, and you simply restart it and when you now uh, press the button the volume is increased yeah of course this is something we want to use later on our wheel so these are the consumer control uh, codes we can also use our keyboard um, library to emulate a press a keyboard press uh, i do this now and say key code alt so the alt key plus so it's just separated by a comma but it's the key code left control and maybe another one a simple letter so for example we just use the key uh, code for the d uh, character and now this would emulate these three buttons but they are pressed uh, continuously so you need to the release them afterwards and why do i show this with this command you can for example use shortcuts to specific programs to use your knobs to start a program okay we have our buttons defined we have a keyboard and consumer control codes control so let's now uh, take our wheel first we define the uh, uh, the state of our clk and we say to none so at the beginning it's none Remember, our task is to find out which is changing first, uh, DT or CLK. So we uh, empty our while loop and we start uh, with a uh, if condition. And uh, the condition is if the last state of CLK is not equal to the current state, to the value of CLK. So if it's changed, uh, if it has changed. On the first one, it's always the case because the CLK last is set to none, but afterwards only if CLK has changed, it will be true. And then we need a second um, if condition. And our second if condition is if DT and CLK are equal. Yeah, so let's check if they are equal or if they are not equal. If they are not equal, we know that it's knob up. If they are equal, um, we know it's knob down. Knob up, knob down, or the wheel. I created two uh, functions above. You can see them. They simply just uh, make a print and uh, they set volume increment and decrement. We had this already, but I just used this uh, yeah, as a definition or function so that our while loop is a little bit easier to, to, to get. At the end of our while loop, we need to update the CLK state so with the current status so that it uh, knows that something has changed and we can simply start it and you see it starts always with knob down so that's because uh, CLK last is set initially to none but uh, afterwards we can rotate our wheel our knob and when you rotate the wheel or knob you will see that the knob is going up or it's uh, going down. And I uh, mean, now you have all, all you need to create your little media center. You can set keyboard uh, controls, you can use the wheel, you can set uh, these uh, consumer codes. Um, so everything you need and you will find my code on GitHub uh, to have some um, examples. Actually, this took a little bit longer than I thought to explain the details. There is so much more in this library. Take a look at it, um, which commands you can use. And afterwards, build your little Raspberry Media Center and you can use it to uh, start your videos, mute them, unmute them. You can define shortcuts. You can use this as a little media center if you like. I hope you enjoyed it. If so, uh, leave a comment, subscribe to my channel, whatever you like, both maybe even, and we see us next time. See you.